Okay, so I just wanted to share something real quick. It took me a minute of uh, researching to figure it out, and I thought I'd make a short video summarizing it for other people that are looking at the same thing. Um, microcontrollers can be a very fun hobby, and when we do this, we might want to out have some sort of output to display. And in which case, a modern output is nice, a little touch screen. Uh, these can, um, you can buy these 30 at a time from the various Chinese wholesalers and they're pretty cheap. The problem with this screen though, is it's going to take up every pin on an Uno. And it's sized for an Uno, so it has that weird gap that doesn't really fit in a breadboard nicely. But you can bend those and shove them in. But it takes up all the pins, which then is hard to do other microcontroller things because there's no pins. So I started researching what could be done. Well, first off, looked at the back. And from the labels here, uh, it looks like these pins down here are just the SPI communication. And pin A5 is not labeled at all. So I did a little bit of research and quickly learned that the SPI communication is only used for the SD card. So if not using the SD card, you don't need these pins at all. So that opens up uh, what, uh, pins 10 through 13. Uh, looks like there's a ground and the analog reference from the Uno there as well. But those pins are not used at all. So that would be a way to get uh, to access some pins and do stuff. And a pin A5 is not used either, so there's still one analog analog out, uh, input or another digital output if needed. And the last batch of knockoff Unos I bought have these little pins to tie in, so I considered doing that. But I wanted to tie in the screen directly. So what I ended up doing was I grabbed one of these, uh, pulled out the soldering tools, grabbed this little connector, and stuck it on there so that uh, I could access pins 10 through 13 and that ground there, um, analog reference if needed, uh, that's there as well. But it gives me access to a couple of pins, so, well, SPI communication to run some sensors or some digital outputs which probably need to either go through some, uh, I don't know, 74HC595s or 74HC165s, some shift register, in and out shift registers to get plenty of pins there. And for the analog pin, I just kind of pulled out that last header and grabbed an 18 gauge wire and shoved that through there. Uh, I guess this thing would have been good over here as well, so then still access the ground and power but it gave access to those Arduino pins. Whoops, bumped my little goose neck there. Uh, I did tie in the power here because right here in the corner, I don't mind having this wire sticking up, but I didn't want to stick stuff up right here. I thought that might get in the way. So I tied, did tie in the Uno, the extra things there, but there's lots of ways to get five volts to a board. There is a ground here, so you can put the ground common, so that's not a problem at all. So I plug this up and bring power to this little circuit. Oh, well, I better plug it up first. Let's see. This went to 11. And this one went to the analog. And hook the LED up to pin 10. There we go. Just a quick sample to see something working. If I bring in the power here. I'll take it just a second to set up and you can see the words on the screen um, I got it wiping slowly to give time to do things because uh, one issue is pin 2 and 3 are definitely being used so the interrupts are going to require port manipulation but uh, let's see if I change the potentiometer here see that analog read changes when I click the button whoop, there's no interrupt, so I have to wait for it to come back around. There we go. Uh, bring it into the background stuff. Or not the background, and that uh, one of those squares is tied to the potentiometer. 
So if I turn that down low, you can see that little cyan colored square in the background changing. So the inputs and outputs are working. Uh, I have inputs and out access to input and output, uh, analog, uh, and some digital in and out. So probably take a little bit of configuring integrated circuits or something to get everything worked up. Some and or not gates or some sort of little tricks to get everything lined up with only four pins. But that's uh, four digital outputs uh, and one analog input, which can be another digital output as well. And a really nice modern screen with full color capabilities and it's a touch screen. I didn't, I didn't do any touch screen and stuff in this demo, but uh, much nicer, get some nice output on the projects and it does require the soldering tools. These boards are really cheap and actually it's like three times more for the ones that don't plug directly in the UNO. So for a third of the cost, you can buy one of these, grab the soldering tools and just replace those last six pins with a header like this. Probably wouldn't hurt to do the same thing over here and pin A5, you can also get access to. So then you have some input outputs for regular microcontroller projects and a really nice display for it. I just thought I'd share that after doing the research. That way, hopefully it'll um, accelerate the research for somebody else wanting to do the same thing.